Alhamdulillah, Mina Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We give thanks to Almighty Allah for making it possible for us to be back on the program, Eternal Bliss, a program put together by Natural Life Fati, NASPAT, to educate us, to make us better human beings, and to make our humanity a better one for each and every one of us. Like we always do on the program, inshallah, we have an interesting and educative topic to be talked about today on the program. What topic is this? It has to do with you, myself, and each and every one of us. The topic is character building in adolescence, the role of parents in Islam. Fauzia Salakosani is my name, welcoming you to this fresh episode with my brother in the studio. Salaamu Alaikum. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allahumma inaka afu to ibul afuwa fa afuwani. Uh, like my sister has said, a very interesting topic that has to do with parents and parents to be. Because it is very important to look after our children, not just for the world alone, to prepare them for the year after. And this, inshallah, will be doing justice to. My name is Nuruddin Olajide Balogo. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. Inshallah, we have no other person to do justice to this topic than having our mother here, Alaja Titi Lola Tawa Kalisu Bakari. She's the former education secretary. She's also council member, Tafsan Investment Limited. She is also Asheshe Beauty Committee member. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ma. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a pleasure having you on the program, ma. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. What we're looking at, character building in adolescence. What we say adolescents? Who do we refer to as adolescents? Adolescents are any child between the ages of 10 and 21. Adolescence at this age is a transitional thing. Moving from childhood to, to adulthood. And a lot of things happen during this age that we need to be aware of as parents. It is not an easy stage for them to cross over. And there's so many things that come up when they are growing or going through this stage of adolescence. Ma, since the adolescence is a transitional phase, what are the characteristics to look out for in an adolescent? The first thing you see is the change in growth. You see that the girls are getting bigger, rounder, I mean, biologically, they are fuller. Even the boys, that is when they start to grow beards. They grow muscles, and they begin to feel big and assertive. So those are the first biological things you see in an adolescent, the change in growth. There are some other features. You have the undefined status which makes it a bit challenging for them. We said adolescents are from ages 10 to 21. The big problem then is where does this start from? Where do I become an adult? Where does my childhood end? You call some people, say, are you this small girl? They say, I'm not a small girl. I'm an adult. So they have, they have this undefined status at this stage too. There is increased de decision making. They want to take charge. I pick you up at school at three, they say, mommy, I'll come home on my own. We will, I will walk home. You cannot go, why can I not go? This person is going, that person is going, we'll be okay, we'll be fine, we can take care of ourselves. He wants to be assertive, they want to take decision. They want to make you feel we are now adults and we can be responsible for our actions. But we all know as parents that at that age, you cannot leave them alone. We have increased pressure, and that is very, very, very interesting. This pressure cuts across almost all spheres of their experiences at that stage. In the secondary school, we have the 11 to 13, which I take as the junior secondary school. If they go into the boarding house, when they get to secondary school, they face pressure, they have issues of bullying, they have issues of coping with their work. 
somebody who has been doing maybe five subjects in the primary school, and here he is in secondary school, saddled with about 16 or 18 subjects. subjects. If as parents, we don't catch that challenge, it affects the overall performance. And we may not know when it started, because frustration will set in. How do I cope with 18 subjects? And they have to carry the bags and take all the books to school every day. So it, it frustrates them. So we must watch out and as parents step in at this initial stage to reassure them, to encourage them, to see them through. We have the next stage, the 15 to 17. Hey, they are now big boys. They are in senior secondary school. And they think they know all about the school. And at that stage too, they want to give back what they experienced in the junior school. And that's why the school and mothers should come in again. Watch your child very well at these transitional stages. Encourage them to tell you what is happening to them at school. Build their confidence to talk, to speak out at any stage. And the final uh, stage, they, there's this search for themselves because of all this coping. You can't do this. This is not the right thing. Some even have sanctions. And they begin to wonder, who am I? Am I an adult? Am I a child? Am I a good person? Am I a bully? There's so many things going on in their head at this stage. So we come in again as the guidance as the guide, as the torchlight, and we begin, we monitor, we keep monitoring, and inshallah, they will come out fine. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we are building a mosque and Islamic complex at Asheshe along the Lagos Ibadah Express Road, and we need your help to complete the construction of the mosque. The Lagos Ibadah Express Road, every day, has more than 300,000 vehicles. That's about 9 million vehicles passing the road on a monthly basis. That's about 52 million passengers. And these are passengers that will benefit from the sighting of this mosque. The mosque has capacity for over 4,000 worshippers and will provide world-class facilities for traveling Muslims, including prayer points, ablution conveniences, medical facilities, training centers, conference and event facilities, and much more. We are now at a crucial stage and we do need your help to complete the roofing and of course to complete the construction of the mosque. Allah has promised a place in heaven for whoever helps to build a mosque. And we hope you can join us to complete the construction of this mosque and especially to complete the roofing, inshallah. To donate, please use the following bank accounts. Account name, Nasfat Mosque Development Account. Or you can make a USSD payment. May Almighty Allah continue to reach us all as we donate to this project. Jazakumullah khairan. Adolescents with that age range you've mentioned, are there behaviors that I, as an adolescent, will begin to identify in myself? I know that, yes, I'm an adolescent. Or are there behaviors that parents will actually notice and say, with this attitude this person is exhibiting, is he or she is claiming to be? And what are the behaviors attached or that come with this adolescent? I'm sure most of us would have seen it and managed it. The first one and the most common of it is getting moody. You have a child in the house for no reason. He's trying to seclude himself. He doesn't want to talk to anybody. He wants to be left alone. And when these things happen, if you know as a parent, you manage it. You manage it by letting him or her be. It doesn't last long most times. They get out of it. Then you take it up as a parent again to let them know there's no need to get unnecessarily moody around the house, especially when there are other people around you. 
they begin to wonder. You make them feel as if they are the one causing you some uneasiness. So we cancel again that. It doesn't, well, people will ignore you if you continue to do this. They get easily frustrated and irritable from time to time. And you know, I gave the example of what happened at school, their homework, the volume of job, and at times they just drop it. And the pressure from parents too. We want to make them do well. You have you done your homework? They want to watch television. We are saying do homework. So at times it's like, what is all of this? And they get frustrated. At times some of them get into a very terrible state during this stage. They injure themselves. We've had cases of young people committing suicide, as grievous as that. And when you wonder why, if they have friends, their friends will just tell you. He has complained to me before that he or she is not happy. He has complained to me before that he feels neglected. He has complained to me before that there's nothing I do that is right with my parents. In fact, I feel my parents don't like me. And some of them take very adverse decisions, which can cause them grievous consequences. They get intentionally angry. All this goes to the mood and what they do. Some of them do get violent. Mm. They hurt other people. If they feel you are the one causing them so much pain, even though your effort is trying to manage them, guide them, they get violent. And they do things you don't expect. You find in secondary school, which is where most of them are, issue of mugging, stabbing, gang, ganging up, and injuring somebody. All this happened during, during this stage. And with all this that we have been talking, it affects some of them, their mental health. And they begin to behave strangely. And parents have to step in again. This is the stage where they get into bad habits like alcohol and drugs. Again, the pressure group. We know in our schools it's unfortunate that even as low as in the primary school, we have courts, we have groups, we have gangs, and we all know they don't do no nothing good but bad behavior. So at this stage, they get into drugs, early sexual, experiences, and that's why you have teenage mothers, unwanted pregnancies, diseases like HIV and AIDS, early pregnancy and childbirth, dropping out of school. All of these are the challenges that parents have to manage when dealing with adolescents. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nasr Lifati Society, Nasbat, seeks your support in achieving the long term goal of building a Nasbat Mosque and Islamic Center at Ashishi on Lagos Ibadan Express Road, Nigeria. The center will be accessible to thousands of Muslims across the country. The proposed center will have ultra modern mosque, library, multi purpose hall, classroom state-of-the-art ICT center, secured and accessible parking spaces, and many more. Quran 2, verse 245. <laughs> Who is it that will lend unto Allah a goodly loan, so that he may give it increase manifold? Allah straighteneth and enlargeth, unto him ye will return. As we can see in this video, the project is in progress, and we need your financial support to complete Nasfat Mosque project. Our Holy Prophet Muhammad, May the peace and blessings of Almighty Allah be upon him. Said, whoever contributes towards the building of house of Allah, Allah will build a house for him in Jannah. To donate, 
Please use the following bank accounts. Account name, Nasrat Mosque Development Account. Or you can make a USSD payment. May Almighty Allah continue to reach us all as we donate to this project. Jazakumullah khairan. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we ask Allah to save uh, parents and uh, children from all you have uh, mentioned. Now to every rules there is always an exception and to these uh, problems there should be uh, uh, solutions. So what are the uh, solutions in solving uh, adolescent uh, challenges? Yes, the first and the most important solution is engaging them relating with them getting them to open up to you and parents have to be very careful at times in our efforts to be good parents we get a bit too hard like i tell people what mr a did and his children came out fine you may do the same thing and you have problematic children in your hands so you have to study your own child. Come up with an approach. Identify the problem your child has. If you want to say, I don't allow my children to watch television or to do this, that is because he or she have identified watching television as something that is affecting that boy. So whatever steps it took may not be appropriate for my child, whose problem is maybe a study habit or ganging or mugging or, or, or bullying at school. So you have to identify the problem. What problem do you have to manage with your child? Once you identify the problem, I said earlier on, get closer. You must listen. You must find a way to let him talk to you. Some of us parents, when the children want to talk, you shut them up. A lot, that's why in this part of the world, said, when I'm talking to you, you don't look into my eyes. You are to be seen and not to be heard. Who ask you to talk? Unlike in other clients, they allow children to say whatever they want to say because it's in the process we begin to catch some of those things that is going on in their minds. They'll be able to ask you questions that will almost settle you and begin to wonder how come he or she knows this question or what does she want to know about, about this area? When you know the problem, then you generate solution together with the child because he's the one affected. You cannot just go and say, from tomorrow, you will not do A, B, and C. No. You now come and say, what can we do? How do we now address this issue? So you create solution together. When you create solution, you evaluate the solution. You ask him, do you think it will be okay if I let you stay back at school for one hour only so that you can play your football? But one hour, no more. I'll pick you. You evaluate and you don't work with this person if it is a group of friends. You try to tell him why you are a bit hard on the type of friends he or she moves with. After evaluating the solution, you now put that solution into test. You must be working with him. Olu, oh, don't you think we are happier together now? We are doing this thing together. And he says yes. And he settles into that solution. You now evaluate and give reinforcement where and when it is necessary. necessary. Um, I said you evaluate the solution. You don't get your full solution staying at home or working with the child alone. At times you may find yourself going outside the home. When the boy tells you, when we close, they say we should go to a film center or we go to a filming center, we go to cinema. You want to find out through his friend. You go to the school and ask, what is the timetable in the school? Is it true they keep them for extra curricular? Because it must have created some time to go to the viewing center. So when you find out from the school that the school closes at three and they don't keep any child and your child gets home at five, 
you have found out from the school that he doesn't, it's not the school that is keeping him. Maybe from his friends, you might find out that it is the village center or some other odd places that they go to. You find out where they go to, what they do there, and all of that will help you to come back and evolve a solution. So you can reach out for help in solving problems and issues that comes up with your adolescent children. We all know that Islam is a total way of life, is a complete religion. So I want to ask Alaja, is there any correlation or relationship between adolescent and Islam? Alhamdulillah. Islam, adolescence is universal. So it's not really about being a Muslim or a Christian or a tribe. It is a universal phase in growth and development. So for a Muslim child, naturally they will go through adolescence. So a Muslim child is expected because we're in the Ramadan season to fast from age 12. This helps them to attain more godliness. It teaches them self-control and patience. I've seen my grandson once or twice. You see the mother is like, you have to. It's only two hours more. You have to wait. Don't break it. Even the little five, six years said, it's 10 o'clock, we agree. And it's not yet 10 o'clock because you had a whole So you must wait till 10. <laughs> this is part of building up and inculcating values of Islam into the children yes. from that age. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nasrullah Lifati Society, Nasvaz, seeks your support in achieving the long-term goal of building a Nasbat Mosque, an Islamic center, at Asheshi on Lagos Ibadan Express Road, Nigeria. The center will be accessible to thousands of Muslims across the country. The proposed center will have ultra-modern mosque, library, multi-purpose hall, classroom, state-of-the-art ICT center, secured and accessible parking spaces, and many more. Quran 2, verse 245. Who is it that will lend unto Allah a goodly loan so that he may give it increase manifold? Allah straighteneth and enlargeth unto him ye will return. As we can see in this video, the project is in progress and we need your financial support to complete Nasfat Mosque project. Our Holy Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Almighty Allah be upon him, said, whoever contributes towards the building of House of Allah, Allah will build a house for him in Jannah. To donate, please use the following bank accounts. Account name, Nasfat Mosque Development Account. Or you can make a USSD payment. May Almighty Allah continue to reach us all as we donate to this project. Jazakumullah khairan. Almighty Allah will help every parent that is striving to bring up a well-developed and balanced child to achieve that target because they will ask us, we are guardians, how did you manage what I gave you? So that responsibility is an enormous responsibility. I mean, before we go because yes. of our time, huh? I would like to ask, as a parent, what are the tips of modeling a good uh, character? Yes, 
modeling a good character, there are certain things you have to find out, you have to know at your fingertips. First and foremost, you have to be role models. I, I saw a two-year-old boy just two days ago in a strange environment who saw a test view. And he said, Allah Akbar. They, this mommy, they use it for Allah Akbar, which shows the parents pray. Exactly. So we should be a model to them. We should give them breathing space. I've said it. At times they want to be, do some things on their own. They think they are big enough. Allow them stay back. When they make mistakes, you come up and tell them this is what they have done. When you need to praise them, please do. Some of us find it very difficult to do that. We think because we are parents, we are always right. And if they do anything, they are expected to do it. No. When we need to say, fine, you've done well, well done, let us say it. We should clearly communicate consequences to them. If you do A and B, I will do this. If you don't do well, this is what I will do. Because if you don't communicate the consequences, they will be injured. They are lost. They don't know your stance. So it is important that we are role model, we are give them a breathing space, and you praise we, them. We praise when them when they, they, well, yes. when they do the order. You also punish, punish mildly, them with carrots and stick. Mildly. Yes. yes. No. Not very yes. serious. My Not own. very serious, but uh, it depends. Alhamdulillah, yes. Rabbil Alameen. This is eternal bliss. Before we go, Ma, that this is it's very, very important that as a parent, we need your advice. For parents watching us, and even these adolescents, your modern advice. For yes, in conclusion, it's a topic you cannot exhaust at one sitting, definitely. But we are here to just share ideas that will guide us. We should teach them from an early age about Allah's one wa ta'ala. Let them know the oneness of Allah, the Shaba, and the great heroes of Islam. That is the pivot. Inculcate the dunya and, and the hereafter. We must be very careful of our children's friends. He says, show me your friends, and I know who you are. So when you see strange people, things you don't like coming to your house, Talk, speak, and let him know your stand on such things. We should encourage our children to participate in wholesome activities. Football, camping, religious, social, everything that is wholesome, we should allow them to go. It's part of the giving them the break to be, and they'll be very happy about it. Allow our children to become a part of the family decision taking. We should bring them on board. I remember somebody very big, Dr. Christopher Polade. He said, the day his father said, what do you feel? Mm. He said it was like, are you talking to me, sir? Because before then, he cannot mm. even talk. Not to talk of well, give you and But all of a sudden, sort of his, his, his contribution is important. So we should allow them to be part of the family decision so that they will get into it and they will not revolt, and they will not revolt. China, their teenage zeal into constructive activities. We should admit that we are wrong at times when we are wrong. And finally, finally, the most important, we should listen to our children, and we should do what we say as parents. As parents, when we preach something, we must do it. We don't just say it and leave it undone. Because when we do, our children look at us, they yes. emulate us. We are mirrors to them. So it's on that note to call it a day on this program. But I wouldn't go without appreciating our guest who has done justice to this topic. We really appreciate Amen. it. We really allow us to continue to increase you Amen. in knowledge, wisdom, Amen. and understanding. Amen. Amen. And our guest has been Elijah Titinola Tawakari to Bakari. She's a former education secretary. She's also council member. Tafsan Investments Limited, and also a member of HHH Building Community Committee. Thank you so much for coming back. Inshallah, that's where we draw the cutting today on the program. Join us again on Eternal Bliss, a program put together by National Radio Party, NASFA. Till then, I remain Fauzia, Salah Kosoni, my brother. And Ahuma in a Kafuru to you. So you put it up for our father for Anna. I am Murdin, or I did a little more. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.